Welcome to Monday Morning Quarterback, a weekly feature of Canon Church. I'm Tim Emmett, the senior pastor at Canon, and on Monday mornings we connect the message from Sunday, the game of football, and the week ahead. In the summer of 1968, Daryl Royal, the head coach of the University of Texas Longhorns, had one big problem. He won a national championship with the Longhorns in 1963, but then in 65, 66, and 67, Texas finished 6-4, and 7-4, and four, and 6-4. and four. That's a run of mediocrity that can get you fired in the state of Texas. Royal knew something had to change, so he made two big, risky decisions in that summer. The first was turning his offense over to one of his defensive coaches. A man named Emery Ballard had been his linebacker coach for only one year, but he turned his offense over to Coach Ballard. Ballard had been a very successful high school coach in the state of Texas, winning three state championships before joining the staff for the Texas Longhorns. That was the first big risky decision. The second was saying yes when Ballard asked him if we could try a new offense, an offense that had never been seen, never been tried, hasn't really, wasn't really proven. It would come to be called the wishbone, but in the summer of 68, no one had seen it or tried it. It was unproven. It was a big unknown. It was called the wishbone because the backs lined up in the shape of a Y, looked like a wishbone. Quarterback, fullback, and then two running backs shaped together formed up together in the shape of a Y. The play from the wishbone offense is called the triple option because any of three players could end up with the football based on what the defense does. And if you'll let me get a little bit football nerdy on you for a moment, when the quarterback takes the snap, he turns to his right or his left and the fullback, the, the back closest to him is gonna come straight beside him. He might give the ball to the fullback based on what the defense does or he might keep it and run down the line. He might keep it himself or then pitch it to a running back who's trailing just right behind him. Any of those three people can end up with the football based on the, what the defense does and what the defense does will always be wrong. If the quarterback is running down the line and a defensive player attacks him, he pitches to that back. If the defensive player attacks that back, the quarterback keeps it and runs. It was a revolution in college football. Texas went 10-1-1 in 1968, then went undefeated in 69, won the national championship. Alabama and Oklahoma both won two national championships in the next 10 years with that same offense. The Nebraska Cornhuskers ran a slightly tweaked version of that same offense, same philosophy in the 90s, and won three straight national championships. It was awesome and overwhelming. But none of it would, have would not have, would have happened if it weren't for a man named Bill Bradley. At the beginning of the 68 season, Bill Bradley was the starting quarterback for the Texas Longhorns. But Texas started that season 1-0-1-1. Oh, one one. They tied their first game, lost their second game. And so uh, the head coach of the Longhorns decided he had to bench his starting quarterback and start someone new. What made that shocking and risky and almost unthinkable is that Bill Bradley's nickname was Super Bill. He was an awesome athlete, a, a third-year starter for UT. He'd been a three-year starter in high school, won a state championship in the state of Texas. He was bigger, stronger, could throw farther than the backup, who was a guy named James Street, whose nickname was not Super James or Super Street, but Rat, the River Rat. That was his nickname. He was smaller, slower, could not throw as hard or as far. But it turned out that James Street was just the right fit for that offense. Bill Bradley was devastated to find out that he was going to be benched, that he would not be the starting quarterback for the Texas Longhorns anymore after the second game of the 68 season. But here's what Bill Bradley did. The first practice after finding out he wasn't going to be quarterback, he lined up at wide receiver. They were going to play him out there. He could see that his team was kind of tense and worried. They weren't quite sure how to handle this. Bill Bradley was one of their captains. He was their quarterback, and now he was out there playing wide receiver. They weren't sure what they thought about that, how they felt about that. So Bill Bradley lined up for a drill, loosened the buckle on his pants so that when he ran out for a pass, they would fall down on purpose, which they did. Everyone busted up and everyone relaxed and the team rolled on. Then in the locker room that Saturday before their first game with James Street, the rat at starting quarterback, Bill Bradley, still, a, still one of their captains, stood up and said, fellas, today we're going to follow the rat. The rat is going to lead us to victory. He's going to lead us to a, to, to a big win today. That was it. Here's the thing. If Bill Bradley cared most about himself, that never would have happened. He could have split that locker room, split that team, and that season would have ended and the wishbone would have failed. You know, on Sunday we continued our current sermon series, What If Love Ruled the World? 
And we heard Jesus invite us to live without idols. We heard him in particular say, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Whatever you value, whatever you love, whatever you value and love most of all, that's where your heart will be. And the heart, remember in the Bible, is not just the center of our feelings, not just the center of our emotions. It's the center of thought. It's the center of our desires. It's the heart of the human person. Whatever you treasure, that's where your heart will be. Think about it for a moment. If Bill Bradley treasured being Super Bill, QB1, the starting QB for the Texas Longhorns above all, if he valued his personal glory above all else, he could have split that team. But that's not what mattered most for him. He cared more about team than he did about himself. He just wanted to win, just wanted to be successful, just wanted to help his team. That's what mattered most. So what's the game plan for this week? Well, the game plan is for us to take a moment for a heart check. Where is our heart? What do we treasure? What do we value most? We might say we believe in Jesus, but when push comes to shove, if we're honest with ourselves, what matters most is success in our career. Or maybe it's our physical appearance or financial security. Anything, things which are actually good in and of themselves can be taking the place of God, can be the thing that matters most to us in our hearts. That's where our heart is because that is our treasure. We might say we believe in Jesus and we do believe in Jesus, but we trust in success, money, appearance. That's our treasure. That's where our heart is. So the game plan for this week is to take a moment and be honest with ourselves. Go in for a heart check. Take ourselves into the presence of God and ask, what do I really value? What matters most? What matters above all and in all? That's the game plan for this week, a heart check. I hope you have a great week.